So hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're doing an unboxing video of this exciting thing that I have bought. So this is a sketching companion, a bag and a little board which you can use to sketch outdoors on plein air, on location, i.e. urban sketch, which is great. Um, disclaimer, well there isn't really a disclaimer, I bought this myself, the chap sent it to me not knowing that I have a little YouTube or that I well, I guess you must know that I do art because I bought it. But other than that, I just bought it. I get no financial reimbursement or anything from this video or from buying this. I just want to give you my honest opinions because I am excited. So let's crack in and open it. Okay, so what we've got is a few little goodies which are extra. So nice postcard. And this is from Ian, who's the one I was communicating with on email, saying thank you very much, basically. So, really lovely touch. A nice personal touch makes everyone feel good, doesn't it? And then we've got a how to use guide and another little brochure. So a little bit, looks like his sort of background. And a bit more info, and of course he sells some watercolours as well. So that's his little watercolour swatches, and they do look rather nice. So I'm going to put these bits to one side. I've watched a few videos on how to use it, so let's see if I can work it out. Uh, and if not, I'll have to go back to the guide. And then inside, what else do we have? So we've got a little container of bits and bobs and some clips. One's labelled, one's not, so not sure what these are. And if I empty them out, maybe we'll find out. Still not sure what they are. So these are little bits of metal with um, self-adhesive. So perhaps they're designed to put on the, the board so you can protect it from the clips, but I'm not sure. I might email the chap and ask him if I don't find an answer in here. Looks like we've got some extras as well. So we've got a, a little cute, um, cute little book just with, I think, I'm not sure if it's watercolour paper, I think it's just normal paper but with some of Ian's illustrations on and they're actually from Slimbridge which is a really lovely place to go. It's a nice little water park near the Cotswolds in the UK. Um, there's a pencil which I wasn't expecting and there's a watercolour which is ultramarine pink which is an interesting colour. I think it's a little bit like Potter's pink. Um, I will try that out another time. The pencil looks interesting though and it fits into the little loop here and this this contraption is the sketching companion. So what we'll do, we'll get everything out and then we'll talk through how the sketching companion works and then of course how the bag works. So what this is, this is a board which has got some magnetic strips in and you can personalise the colour and I was in a rush wanting to get it quickly so I asked for, uh, I think it's burgundy and burgundy because I'm not very inventive. Got a little watercolour pot, not watercolour pot, water pot on the top. Um, I've got one like this. They're okay. Um, for me it's not enough water but I think is there a better solution for being really portable um, and fitting on a tiny thing like this? Probably not. And it's really nice that, that this is included rather than having to source your own thing. So little touches but, but rather nice. And it seems reasonably well made. I'm I mean, it seems quite firm. It's it's just made out of plywood with a with a coating, but it, I've got no complaints. This is kind of what I was expecting. So, thank you very much. Now, what's supposed to happen is you get a, a hardback sketchbook. So I've got my A4 moleskin sketchbook, and you slot the sketching companion in front of the cover and behind the back pages, like so. And then, in theory, you open it out and it stays stable and then this is where these clips come in so you add your clips to the the sides of your sketchbook they don't have to clip the board they just go on the sketchbook there should be another one there we go and the same here so you can clip on the other side and then just like magic it doesn't fall off so, number one point, success. Now the other bits I wanted to try is do my various bits fit in here? So, number one test is could I put a pen in here? 
then you're less likely to want to put a pen in there because the pen can easily go in your pocket. Go okay, in my little side pocket here. But it does fit, so even though it's a, something thicker than the pencil, it still fits rather nicely. So that's success number one. Number two is could a water brush fit in there? Um, and yes, bit of a squeeze, but it, it's definitely fitting. I, I, I don't think we're risking damaging the elastic. It's definitely um, definitely squeezing the elastic a bit, but I think that's okay. And if a water brush can fit in there, then other brushes can as well, because other brushes are smaller than a water brush. Then you're more likely to want to put a brush in there, because a brush you can't put in your pocket as easily. Now the last bit is this magnetic bit. So the idea of this is you pop your palette on and you can hear that, that's a healthy click, isn't it? And it should stay really secure. And yes, it does. So again, we can shake it upside down, which you're unlikely to be doing, and it will stay secure. What about if we move it over? Yeah, if we even stretched over, it stays really nice and secure. And now what I'm gonna be able to do, I hope, Pop my pen in there, and this is where we can now stand around and sketch. So I would call this uh, successful so far. So first impressions of this sketching board is it does do basically exactly what it says on the tin. So I'm going to be able to sketch rather nicely, rather easily, and um, use this little sketching board um, while stood up with a a hard backed and at least A5 sized sketching book. So I did also want to just try and be cheeky and see if it works with other things. So so test number two is an A5 but landscape sketchbook, which is not what this is sold for, but I'd love it to be flexible. So let's see what happens. So we're going to do the same process Clearly got this upside down. This is an old sketchbook from years ago. But will it work? That's the question. And I think it's going to actually. I do think it's going to. So that's really good news. So there's my other clip. And yeah, that's a very, very secure again. So it's not sold to do an A5 um, landscape book, but it definitely does do that. And it's very secure again. So the next thing to have a look at, having tested this in every way I can think, is the bag itself. So let's have a little closer look. So the bag has got lots of Velcro on the front. It's got these little Velcro closures as well as a zip. So that looks like it's going to be very secure. It's got lots of attachment points, so you can clip all sorts onto it, or you can clip it to all sorts of things. So if you look from the front, it looks like that with these little closures. On the back, it's got a couple of loops. You could easily put a shoulder strap on, or you could, I assume, attach it to a bag via some bungee or something. And all of these little clips, again, just mean it can easily clip to things. And I think they are removable. So you can unclip them, pull them out. That means you can move them, or you can replace it with something else, or whatever else. Really. It seems very flexible. The material itself is quite heavy duty. I think it's just sort of bog standard nylon, but it it seems perfectly good. And inside is absolutely full of elastic, basically lots of places for storing. We've got the back and unzipped compartment at the front of the zip compartment. And I believe the reason this one is unzipped is because that's where this board fits. And that looks to be right because it fits perfectly in there with the water thing just nipping its nose above. Then we've got all this other area to store things. I suspect that the your sketchbooks, so this one's designed for A4, A5 rather. So the A5 doesn't fit in the zip pocket in it. Doesn't really fit behind there. So the, the sketchbook has to go in the middle when you've finished filling things up. But let's just see how much stuff we can fit in here and what size we can fit in. So what I've done is I have emptied out my normal sketching um, container um, and we'll see if all of this stuff can easily fit inside. What we've got is we've got lots of loops at the front here and behind them we've got other loops. So we've got little loops 
on big loops. And then let's see, so these are a bit longer, so I'd be interested to see if they also fit really easily. And I think they're just going to fit, so it'll be interesting. When we try and close it, we'll know. So I've also got a couple of normal brushes out. I wanted to know if these would fit. Of course, if they don't fit here, they're always going to fit lengthways, but it's nice to have them sort of standing proud if we can. And yeah, that looks good. So I think they're going to fit. Now, what I don't think is going to fit, I do love carrying these Chinese brushes. They are rather long, you can see. And they're definitely not going to fit inside without damaging the, the nib there. And I think even lengthways, they're not going to fit. We are left with a little bit of extra space though, so let's see, our watercolours can probably fit behind one of these. Ah, but if they go behind there, they're going to be magnetised here, which is going to be annoying to get them in and out. So I guess they can go in our zipped pocket instead. We've got this bungee, and I just want to test it because I think I think what it's for is, when you're carrying it, if you want to have it upright, instead of it just flopping, I think if you tighten this bungee a bit, so I, I imagine that's what it's for, so that you can have this attached to yourself, your front or your bag, and you can have it so it never opens too much, never just flops open and you lose everything. And then last in, there's our sketchbook just in that middle bit. And it'd be great if the sketchbook could fit somewhere in a safer box, but again, I think we're sort of stretching the limits of safety. I think neither of these brushes actually are going to be happy in there because you can see as we close it their bristles are getting brushed. So if we want brush brushes like this you can see it's definitely going to fit in it's, but it's going to have to go in horizontally. For now I'm just going to take them out. And the other thing you can do is of course use it for more travel brushes. So Instead of brushes where the nibs out, brushes which you can take the handle off and pop over the top. And I've got a few of those and obviously they'll fit. So maybe that's the solution. If I want non-water brushes, I have to pack my my um, my travel brushes rather than try and carry around my normal brushes. But there you go. It's all looking rather neat, isn't it? A couple of brushes didn't fit. Otherwise, everything did. And you can see it's really going to be quite an easy thing to carry around. So that is the end of my first impressions with this little bag. Um, by the time this video is out, I will probably already be editing my video on my second impressions, having actually used it, um, because I will have come back from my holiday where I'll be walking around camping and hiking and sketching the things and that I see around me there. So check in for the next video. I'll, when it's out, I'll pop a link in the comments below. I'll also pop a link to this up on my website. So if you want to find it, um, just go to the supplies tab. And um, like I said, this is uh, something I just bought off my own back. The the chap who owns it doesn't know, isn't paying me anything. So honest, honest first impressions here. And I look forward to giving you my honest second impressions. Look, here's a bit which needs to touch.